Hello, Keith Rucker here at VengeMachinery.org. Well, today I got a little project uh, we're going to get started working on. Actually, uh, we're going to do three of these. I've got mine here right now, and we got a got a couple of guys coming in that also have the same uh, Camelback uh, straight edge that we're going to be machining. So, what this is, this is a Camelback straight edge, uh, like I just said, and, and uh, it's basically used as a reference surface uh, when you're scraping in a machine. Uh, when you can't take the machine to the surface plate and you need a straight edge to, to, to work off of, uh, such as doing waves on a milling machine or something like that, you can use a tool like this to come in there and transfer that straight, uh, flat surface onto the, onto the surface that you're working off of or that you're scraping in. So this is a brand new casting. This is actually a Richard King casting. Uh, Richard, of course, teaches our scraping class that, w that we've already had one. We're getting ready to do another one. Uh, but uh, you, nobody's really making these straight edges anymore, at least not that I'm aware of. So Richard had some patterns made up and had some castings done. And uh, these are nice quality castings. They've all been heat treated um, to basically relieve any stresses in them. And he sells these. And this is an 18 inch model. He has them in different sizes. I think 12 inches, 18, 24. Uh, I think he's got a 36. I can't remember the exact range, but he sells these rough castings. Uh, but the, the thing you have to do when you get it is you have to machine it and then scrape it in. So it's not really a finished project, a product, but uh, that's what we're going to be working on today. is getting this machined and then uh, during the scraping class, um, at least a couple of the guys are going to be scraping these in. I've got one. I went ahead and, and got one from Richard. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to scrape this in during the class or do it later on. I've got a couple other projects I'm going to probably work on during this class, but I did want to go ahead and while we were machining these, get these going. So I'm going to get started on this one. Um, my, the two guys are taking the scraping class that need theirs done. They're on their way here, and when they get here, we'll start on theirs as well. Uh, but you can see the process of uh, machining the surfaces. So there are several surfaces that we're going to do on this. First off, I want to machine this back side flat and fairly perpendicular to the bottom. Uh, obviously this is a rough casting, but this basically would become a reference surface and we'll lay it down flat on that surface. We'll machine the bottom of this. Uh, then we will machine uh, the top. I don't know if it'll be the next step, but at some point we'll machine the top straight across. And then we've also got this little dovetail. This is a 45 degree angle on here, uh, and we'll have to machine that, and uh, we'll probably do that on the, uh, the vertical mill. Uh, but anyway, we've got a bunch of surfaces to be machining, so let's get started. So I think the bulk of the work today is going to be done on the, the horizontal milling machine. I've got this big uh, face mill here uh, that we'll be working off of. And this will basically be at a 90 degree axis to the table. And uh, a lot of these that we're working off of, that's, that's exactly what we need. Uh, so that's what we're going to start with. So first thing I'm going to do is get this casting um, onto the table and nice and, and square. So actually I think I'm going to machine this back side. So we're going to flip this around this way. Um, you know, these are all rough surfaces right now, so I don't really have any good references. That's what we're going to be creating. So I'm just going to take this and line the back side of the, the, the casting here up with the edge of the table. And uh, this is not super critical, but I want it to be close and, and fairly perpendicular to the, the, the level itself or the straight edge. And then, um, see, I think I need to slide that down just a little bit. And the next thing I want to do is, as you can see, you know, this is rocking just a little bit. And that's because these, uh, this was a split pattern when it was cast and there's a, a little bit of an angle for draft on either side of that bottom face. So to kind of level it up, I've got some wedges here. These are actually for removing a uh, more taper off of a drill chuck, but you got a nice uh, wedge in here and I'm just going to lean this up and I'm just going to slide these under just enough to kind of take the rocking out of this. And then I'm going to clamp this thing down right here and hopefully that'll get everything nice and you know, again, fairly square. We'll come in here, we'll do this back edge and everything should be in good shape. So let me get these clamped down and we'll be back in just a second. Well, I've got this thing bolted down now. 
Hopefully that's going to hold in place without too much trouble. And I've got my height set where the bottom is just shy of hitting, coming into the there if I did my measurements right. So what I'm going to do now is going to feed in until it's just touching off right here on the side. And first pass is just going to be a skim pass. I don't know how much uneven this is across here. I don't know if this is thicker on one end than the other. So we're just going to take a, a light pass across. Uh, at least that's the plan. It may get heavy on this end. Uh, and then we'll come back and do a finished pass or two, depending on what it takes. So um, I got the mill running on, what is that? 73 RPMs. We got a big face mill in here with multiple cutters on it. And I'm just come in here until it touches off. All right. I'm going to come out just a little bit. And I'm going to go in probably another, I don't know, ten thousandths or so just to get it going. And let's make sure everything's good here. And we'll start feeding across. I'm running at an inch and three quarters per inch feed, or per minute feed rate. Inch and three quarters per minute. Sounds like one tooth is doing most of the work, but I think it'll be fine. We got the first two of these uh, milled on this side. It, it turned out it didn't quite clean up all the way down that corner, but for what we're going to be using this for, I think it's going to be fine. Uh, so I, we're, going, we're going with it anyway. Uh, but anyway, these are ready to go on the next step. We still got one more straight edge coming. He hasn't showed up yet, but as soon as he does, we'll get his caught up. But I think the next thing we'll do is we we'll now use this uh, surface here. As a reference, lay these down flat on the milling machine and we'll come in here and, and uh, square the bottom of these up. So we got our second op going here now and basically we just laid this over flat on these milled surfaces. I got some one, two, three blocks up underneath the bottom of this just raising it up off the table. And uh, we're coming in now and milling the bottom of the straight edge flat. So we'll go ahead and do these. Uh, we got the other uh, straight edges in now. We went ahead and got the back milled on it. So we'll go ahead and get all three of these done. So we got the bottoms milled on uh, all three of these. One of them is already back on the other machine. I'll show you where we're at in a minute, but you can see got a nice uh, milled surface on the bottom. Haven't put them on the surface plate to see how flat they really are, but that's what we'll be doing during the scraping class is making sure they're perfectly dead flat. Uh, but these should get them pretty darn close to that. So let me take you over to the milling machine. I'll show you the next step we're doing uh, over there. So the next step on the mill here is, is we're machining this surface back here square with the bottom. So basically I'm just sitting on some one, two, three blocks again. We got it clamped down. Um, we did kind of come in here and since this surface across the back is uh, machined, uh, we use that as a measurement between there and the milling machine to get it set up where it's, these should be fairly parallel. Now I'm not worried about these being exactly parallel with one another the way we would you would use this uh, device. I can't think of a reason why they would have to be perfectly parallel, but we got them, I would say probably within at least a thousandth of an inch uh, the way we set them up. But uh, uh, anyway, we're just getting this part square back here. Uh, once this is done, we'll have to come in and do the 45 on this side. So I know some people are gonna ask about how we got these uh, running parallel. 
So I've got these V blocks and these are ground exactly the same um, thickness in this direction on both of these are square and everything else. So basically we just set this in here, pushed it up against here and we're running off the back of the the column of the machine and we're running off these machine surfaces in here and I mean it's tight enough right now that they're holding it in place. So we're milling the uh, 45 degree angle on here and I've gone over now to the uh, vertical mill to do this. Uh, instead of the horizontal, it just gives me a little bit more flexibility to get this particular job set up. And as you can see, we've got this sitting in some 45 degree angle blocks so that basically the top of this is, uh, is uh, parallel to the, the cutter. Uh, so we're just making basically a flat cut across here. So I got my blocks bolted down to the table and then I've got these uh, clamps in here clamping the part to the 45 degree block. Now one of the guys that's here was asking about my direction that I'm going and I'm going in this direction on a purpose. So this cutter is turning in this direction and if you look the cut is actually forcing the part into this base up underneath it. If I were to come on the other direction and feed the other way the cutter would be cutting on this side and it would be pushing the part away from the 45 degree block. I want to use my cutting forces to hold everything in place here so uh, you know I'm only milling in one direction and it's just to make sure that I've got a nice firm foundation. So uh, we're cutting about a 25 thousandths depth on this. I'm really trying not to take too much off in a pass just because I'm, I'm confident that my piece is it held in place real strong but it's not as rigid as it probably could be to make a really really heavy cut. And, uh, on this part, on everything else, we basically be just getting it cleaned up. On this part, we're actually trying to get this uh, down to a, not a super sharp point, but get it milled down where it's not, you got a little bit of a point in there where you can get into a tight corner. So we'll take a few more passes on these and get the other ones uh, mounted up and get those done, but we're making good progress on these uh, straight edges. So we're down to our last operation here. I'm just uh, milling the top flat. You know, this is kind of optional, but my theory is that if you ever flip it over and have it resting on this side, you wouldn't want to leave it there for long. But if it's flat, it's not going to be as opt to, to flip over on you. Um, I've got a pretty heavy cut going across here. We're taking about a 50,000 pass. And because you have such short tooth engagement on this, it's a, it's a little noisy, but it's fine. There's not really much shatter in it. It's, it's making a nice finish. So we'll go ahead and knock the tops off all of these, and these should be done. So we got the machining done on all three of these uh, castings, and uh, the other two guys that have brought theirs down, they were in a hurry to get on out of here and get back home. They had a couple hour driving to do. So all I have to show you is mine, uh, but they all came out pretty much identical, uh, other than we all had different colors, uh, which was not coordinated or planned. It just turned out that way. These are all the same castings. Again, these are uh, castings that were done by Richard King. Uh, if anybody's interested in getting some castings to do their own uh, straight edge, uh, I would suggest you go to Richard King's website and uh, contact him via email. And, and he's got an email link on his website. I put the address down here. I can't remember exactly what it is. It's Kingway scraping, maybe. I can't remember. But anyway, I'll put it down here. And uh, you guys will also be in the video description if you want to uh, get a hold of Richard uh, about purchasing some of these castings. The quality of the castings are great. I didn't see any inclusions or voids or anything like that in here. Uh, they machine great. Uh, very pleased with that. Uh, next step for these um, will all be to be scraped in in flat. So really the only surfaces that will scrape will be the bottom and then this uh, 45 surface. Uh, and those will be scraped perfectly flat using the surface plate as a reference. And then the idea is you can take this to a machine and blue it up when you're scraping in <coughs> ways and stuff on a machine. I've got a 36 inch Camelback, basically twice this long. <coughs> this will be handy for 
uh, like a milling machine, the crossways on there, where you don't want to just have to handle such a big one. I've also got the big uh, uh, six footer back here behind me, uh, which is <laughs> too big to handle by yourself, but if you're working on a big machine, we'll probably use that one uh, when we start scraping in the metal planer over there. Uh, but anyway, very pleased with how these turned out. Um, I think what I'm going to do is during the scraping class, I know the two Jeffs that were here today, they're going to actually plan on scraping theirs in during the scraping class here in a little over a week. I'm going to probably set mine aside. Uh, I've already scraped in my 36 inch in the last class. I know the process and I'm going to probably do this on video, uh, not during the class, but separately so you guys can see the process of scraping. So I think that'll be a fun little project uh, to do and I can show you both handscape scraping and power scraping and how you turn this machined um, straight edge into a precision hand scraped straight edge. You know, it's pretty flat right now with just the milling, but it's probably not to within. I, I don't know, probably. We'll see when we get it on the surface plate. Uh, but during the milling process, we probably relieved some stresses in it. So even if it was, uh, you know, milled flat, more than likely there's a little bit of play in here right now. Uh, it probably is not accurate enough for scraping right off the milling machine. We, are, we need to, to actually scrape it in to get it there. So with that, uh, that'll be a wrap on this um, episode. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing some milling action. We got to use both the horizontal and the vertical milling machine today. And uh, we'll have another video down the road on hand scraping this, uh, uh, this straight edge in. Thanks for watching.